Once as an operator in the cab, first thing you'll do, of course, is make sure everybody's in the clear, that uh, once you turn the key forward, you're not gonna accidentally get anybody or cause anybody to get injured. Once we've made sure everybody's in the clear, checked around both ways, we'll turn the key just to the auxiliary position. We won't actually cause it to uh, fire. This is what we call the 2630. This is Green Star 3 technology. Pretty much all your functions for the tractor are taken care of on your command arm screen. Everything with the planter and with uh, GPS, guidance, mapping, changing whose field you're in, most of your work is going to be done on the 2630 screen. This always pops up, of course, to uh, give you a warning uh, and it's advisable to follow it. After you accept the warning and hit next, almost always this screen is going to come up. The thing to remember, anytime it asks you coverage map exists, you always, without any exception, ever, ever, why it even asks us this, I don't understand, always hit continue with coverage. Never hit clear current field. If you hit clear current field, everything you've recorded in that field prior to right now is going to be erased. So no matter what, even if you're moving to another field, you never clear coverage. Always continue with coverage. It'll ask you this every time you turn the key off and turn it on. Whether you're starting it uh, at the beginning of the day or just for lunch, whatever. Every time it will ask you that, you always continue with coverage. This is going to be your main screen. This is where you're going to be running most of the time. Up on the top left, you'll see there's 24 red columns. These are indicating 24 rows. Uh, we're uh, planting corn or you could be planting soybeans on 30 inch rows. That's why you're sowing 47 total rows up here, but only 24 of them planting with big skips in between because we're only planting 24. These green boxes, odd sized as they are, are your clutch groups. In other words, each one represents one to four rows that are being engaged or disengaged as you come across your headline, headlands. So with section control, that automatically turns off each of these individual sections to make sure that you don't have too much of a overlap on your point rows and your cross ends, but yet you have adequate coverage when you start and drop it into the ground as you're moving forward. In the bottom left, you'll notice a GPS map. Uh, right now it's set for straight track, opposite direction that we happen to be sitting. That is why you have all these blue lines. The GPS wants to take over with the Green Star, Starfire 3000, and uh, take you down the opposite or uh, sideways line at uh, the degree that it's uh, set in the computer. When you first get to a new family farm, first thing you're gonna wanna do is come under the client name. Hit new. You can name him one or you can use the guy's actual name. It really doesn't matter. I generally try to use the person's first and last name to keep it straight. Uh, the farmer's name is John Smith. Once you're done, hit accept. Now you're going to move to the farm. As a rule of thumb, always just put in farm number one doesn't really matter anything will work you just have to plug in something if a guy happens to have different tracks of land you could maybe put in you know one for the first area too unless the guy has green star technology on use on his farm most farmers aren't going to care whether the data is stored or not this is only to help us do a professional job and keep track of things while we're working, not long term over the course of the entire growing season like a guy would if he has Green Star uh, on his entire farming operation. Next, you're gonna wanna name the field. I'll go to new. The first field is always number one, and then I would just work up and mark the FSA maps the same, one for the first field you do, two for the second, three for the third, and so on. That way when you're talking to the farmer, he knows it as Aunt Sally's West 
160 or the back 40. But to us, it's just a number because we've never seen this field before. So it just keeps everything a lot more simple if you name every field in sequential order. This is the first field, we'll hit one, accept. It's gonna say processing data as it uh, backs up all the data from the previous family farmer. Now it says check document setup. All documentation information from the previous operation has been pre-populated. Verify that this is accurate. As a rule of thumb, with the exception of switching from soybeans to corn or vice versa, you normally always just hit accept. Leave this uh, unchecked because you do want it to warn you, to remind you, but normally you're always going to go to accept. Next thing you're going to do is you have to go around the outside. So to go around the outside, you're going to need to go to adaptive curves. Right now it is marked as straight track. So you tap on the touch screen. You'll notice adaptive curves. Uh, we always use guidance, so that's never an option. We never use swap track. We never do AB curves, and unless you're working a center pivot, you're never going to do circle track. You're never going to do ditch or levee track. So the thing to remember is you're only going to have to think of two things when you come into your tracking mode. Straight track for the middle of the field and everything but the outside, and adaptive curves for the outside two passes and your cross ends and anytime you're working in contours or where you have to follow a crick bed and it's such a small field it's just best just to finish it up following that that general pattern of the crick so the first thing when you get to a field is always going to be adaptive curves once you have selected adaptive curves you're going to need to start recording you want to make sure that this red dot is flashing when this red dot is flashing, it is recording wherever we drive. When we start to move, you can see this little uh, icon of us and the planner. There will be a dark blue line that will follow right behind like a kite tail, and it will follow exactly. If you do a figure eight pattern, it will, it will document that. So you want that dark blue line following you. That way you know you're going to be able to uh, put it on uh, auto steer when you go around the second time. If you forget to hit record, you are going to have to steer both cross ends. You always have to go around the field twice because you have to be able to turn around and there's no way of turning around inside yourself in just one pass. So I know even though we're putting down 24 rows or 47, uh, you still have to go around twice. It's just the way it has to be. And some farmers are okay with it. And in some cases, uh, it's easier if you're working with really tight points or some situation like that where you'd actually go around three times. But generally, you're always going to go around the outside of the field twice. Every wet hole twice, every waterway, just any time the outside is, is making contact with the field, you have to go around it twice to give you enough room to, while you're still moving, pick the planter up, turn around, and get the planter back straight to drop it in the ground. With all the computer technology, you don't have to come to a stop at the end, pick it up. You just stay right at five mile an hour and you just pick it up turn around real careful, drop it back down. The computer takes care of disengaging all of the individual row units, and it takes care of engaging each one as it crosses the boundary. It knows because we're recording. The last step after selecting adaptive curves, making sure the record is flashing, it's on, Way to double check that this is working. It's, you know, obviously you can see whether it's flashing or not, but you notice while it's flashing, I can't change any of these fields. They're blurred out. As soon as I stop, I can. So out of the corner of your eye, if you're going through the field and you can see that these are clear, you know you're not recording and you better hit it or you're gonna have to drive the second time all the way around. For that same reason that uh, all of us are human and we forget to hit the record button, I recommend highly every time you go around the field the first time, you're going to usually go around the field on the right side. The reason being is your 2630 screen, your command arm screen, your speed and f-stop indicator are all right here on the right side. So it just makes sense as you're going through the field that you would look off to your right. 
So as a rule of thumb, always work the field from the right side. So you come into a field, you want the crick or the fence or the guy's tree line to be off to your right. That way, all your controls are right here. So when you have to do anything, push a button, you're not trying to transition from this side over to this side. Just everything naturally flows. So you always try to keep the right side closest to whatever you're going around. That will mean that your left marker needs to go down. Sometimes it works in auto, other times it needs to be in manual. To get your marker to work, you have to be in plant, clutch needs to be in the middle, manual, and then you select the left marker. With left selected by the light, see now right selected, you're gonna to wanna to select left because you're going around the field on the right side, so you want the left marker deployed. Once you're on left, you'll go to SCV number two and you will hold it down. That will cause the marker to come up in the air and go down. To return the marker to the uh, stowed position, hold SCV two in the up position, pull it towards you. That will pull the marker towards you and return the marker back to its cradle. So you wanna fully deploy the marker on the left side when you're going around the field. The thing to remember is when you get to where you need to stop and back up, you wanna make sure that you pull number two, the marker, up out of the ground. It's not very good for the marker if you're trying to back around and turn around with the marker in the ground. If you don't hit anything, everything goes just right, it'll probably hang together, but it's a lot of wear and tear on it. So try to get in the habit every time you're gonna be turning around or you're going to be uh, backing into a corner, in a square corner, to make sure you pick up your marker and uh, have it back in the cradle before you turn around. Now we're ready to go. So we've got our marker out. We're along the right side of the field. We take SCV number one and we push it forward and then we click it into the detent position. Again, we're gonna make sure everybody's in the clear. Nobody's around, nobody's gonna get hurt if we put it in the ground. Everybody's safe. We'll take number two, we'll click it down. Now that engages the planner. So you take number one and detent it by clicking it once. You click it and it stays. You'll notice that it's in continuous this here is SCV number one, two, three, and four. Number one is continuous, and you can see that black line right there. See, now I'll turn it off. See how the black line disappears? When I click it, the black line is here at full service and continuous. So it's continually putting down pressure, and it is engaging the, uh, the CCS fan to bring product from the big tanks to each of the mini hoppers. Now we're ready to go. The last thing you'll want to do is turn your steering on. It's not going to work when you first go around the outside, but that way you're ready when you go around your second or third pass. Steering's on already. So once you get going, you go all the way around the field. You remember to pick your marker up at the ends. You back into your corners, or if you can, just make a nice sweeping curve and just continue around the corner. The thing to remember when you're going around the outside the first time, you don't want to get yourself into too tight of a corner. Obviously, if you get too tight, you may stick the right side of the planter into the fence or into a power line pole, uh, but also you don't want to turn so tight that you actually cause the left side of the planter to back up. You think of it, it's 60 feet wide, and so when the outside's spinning you know, way, way fast, the inside has a tendency to actually stop or could go backwards. If it stops, you're fine, but if it starts to go backwards, that can cause a problem and you'll end up pressing dirt into your seed tube and you'll plug your seed tube and you'll plug your liquid fertilizer or insecticide tube. You only have to do that once or twice and clean it out before you remember to never let the inside wheels go backwards. They can stand still, but just don't turn so sharp that they go backwards. The same thing, of course, when you come to a stop. You click number one up, pulls it up out of the ground. Make sure it's all the way out of the ground before you start backing up. 
Again, you'll only do it one time, and after cleaning out 24 or 47 seed tubes, you'll never forget to take the planter out of the ground before you back up. You won't wreck anything per se if you do it just a little bit. If you do it quite a while, yeah, you would. But uh, for just a bit, all you're going to do is plug the tubes, but it's a lot of work to clean all those tubes. Now you've gone around the field all the way one time, now you're ready to go around the second time. Once you go around the second time, you're gonna have a little blue line that's gonna turn white right where you're at. And once it turns white, you're locked on or the computer knows where it needs to be. So then you hit the auto resume button. The auto resume button is right here. It has auto with a steering wheel. So all you do is click it. When you click it, it will beep and it will engage and it will allow you to track on your previous track just 60 feet over uh, and now it will follow every move you make. Now if you come to a really sharp curve you have to be careful because it will try to make that sharp curve. Even though it's impossible to make it, it will try to follow exactly what you did last time. So you need to be paying attention when it beeps at you and tells you sharp curve ahead Take it serious and be ready to grab the wheel. So you wanna be going along and it's locked on the line, let's say, and we're going around the second time. As Soon as it beeps at you and it says sharp curve, you watch your screen, it'll show a real sharp curve coming up. So you kinda of take your hand like this, just ready to grab the wheel. As soon as you feel the auto steer take over and it starts to grab the wheel a little bit, just jerk the wheel like this, just about an inch, inch both ways. That will knock auto steer off, and then you can steer the curve the way that it can actually handle uh, by easing it through and not trying to turn so sharp. Or a lot of times, if you go in a, in a circle or a curve the first time, the second time around, you're going to want to straighten it off. So instead of turning and, and turning inside yourself, which is going to plug the seed tubes, you're going to just drive straight into that and kind of make it like a cross end. And then you're going to pull until you completely cover everything, but obviously not put the front of the tractor in the crick or up a telephone pole or anything like that. You want to stop. Uh, and and, and in, in light of that, if you see the edge right above your wheels up front or like on the American flags up front, if you see the line right where the flag are you know that's 60 feet so it's 60 foot from the front of the tractor to where the planter is actually putting seed in the ground is 60 feet so all you have to do is pull until the front of the tractor is even with uh, with the edge of the ditch or the telephone pole or the edge of the field and you know you have 60 feet then of course you'll take number one you'll click it all the way up wait for it to come out of the ground and then you can back up and back yourself into the corner. Now, of course, the second time around, you're not gonna use the marker because you don't wanna have that divot that you're bouncing through every time. If you're only gonna do you know, two rounds for the cross ends, only put the marker down the first time. The second time, keep the markers in, let the auto steer by engaging it here on the command arm, let it drive you around the field. Just any time again you get to the sharp curves, be ready to grab the wheel. As soon as it starts yanking the wheels around, just grab the wheel like this and it'll knock it right off and now you have control and you can turn the tractor just wherever you need to go to make the most sense. The thing to remember when you're planting is you always want to be thinking about the guy coming behind you to combine it. It's not a big deal if it's soybeans because you can combine it any which direction. It's also not a big deal if you know it's a dairy farmer and he's going to chop it with a big Kemper head. It doesn't matter. He could go crosswise the whole field. But if a guy's going to be, like most cases on corn, he's going to be harvesting it with a combine. And so you always need to be thinking, can this curve be taken with a 12-row head or an 8-row head? If you don't think so, square it off. Don't try to make the curve because all you're doing is hurting his yield. When you turn so sharp on contours or in the corners and stuff, it gets so sharp that he can't make it with his even a six row head, which is small in today's standards. Uh, then you're not doing him a service. Just straighten it off and make it into a cross end because it's much better to use those 30 inch rows and go straight with them than to go across because you're always going to be knocking some ears off with the snoots. So just keep in the back of your mind whenever you're planting corn that you figure is going to be combined, 
you want to make sure you're thinking ahead. That goes also for not planting too close to the fence. What do you gain him if you rip his snoot off when he's combining it because he's following that row and you're planting right next to the fence or right next to the telephone pole or right next to a big river and he ends up you know, collapsing the bank and sliding into the river. So the idea is think about the guy who's combining and try to you know, think about how his weight and his size and his snoots are going to be affected by how you plant the crop.